Paper Crafters Library. In this video, I'm going to share with you some of my art journaling process as I create this two-page layout that features a gorgeous background using the Ranger Distress Stains. So for this particular art journal, I'm working in my large moleskin sketchbook. And here you can see what the natural color of the pages looks like. So I've gone ahead and placed a piece of masking tape across the seam between the pages, and then I've covered both pages with gesso. I'm now going to be using the Tim Holtz Terminology Tissue Wrap. You can see it comes on this roll. And I've just taken a piece that's big enough to cover both of my pages. And I'll trim whatever is overhanging after it's been applied. So the next thing I need is a large paintbrush. And I'm just working with a flat one inch brush. And I'm going to be using my Claudine Helmuth Multimedium Mat. So taking my multimedia mat, I want to spread an even, fairly thin layer of that across both my pages. And then I'm going to take my tissue paper and lay it across. Press it down the center and then just use my hands to smooth it out. It is going to wrinkle as it the moisture from the medium seeps in. You may notice some wrinkling or buckling of the tissue paper. I don't worry about that. With art journaling it's all about texture and interest and dimension and I just love the effect that that gives. So I've thoroughly dried the medium underneath and my next step is to trim around the edges. If you have a blank page on either side of the journal page you're working on, you could very easily just fold the tissue paper over. But on this side you see I have a finished journal page. So I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to use the edge of the page as a guide to trim around and trim off the excess overhanging tissue paper. So I finished trimming off the overhanging tissue paper and these little strips that I have left over, I'm not going to throw these away. I'm going to save these and collage them onto another art journal page. So the next step is to apply Distress Stain. Now the key to this technique is that Distress Stain has to work on a porous surface. So I made sure that I did not put any medium on top of my tissue paper. It's just the tissue paper, the medium's only underneath. So with my Distress Stain, I now want to apply my color all over my background pages and the color I'm using is Wild Honey. So I'm just going to press this against my page and I'm rubbing it back and forth as you can see to get the color to seep in and I'm going to do that across both pages. So there you can see what it now looks like. I just kept applying the Distress Stain until the color got about as intense as I wanted it to and then I took my heated craft tool and heated it. So I'm now going to start using the Barn Door Distress Stain and I've got handy a spritz bottle. This was an empty hair product bottle that I rinsed and filled with water because it, I really liked it. it had a nice fine mist. So I'm going to take my Distress Stain and I'm keeping my paper towel here near the top of my, um, or beneath the page and I'm just going to squeeze and just apply some of this Distress Stain near the top so it's quite liquidy and then take my bottle and just liberally spritz it so that the distress stain, as you can see here, is now starting to run down my page. And because it's quite wet, I can add a little bit more and then add a little bit of water. And you can see how pretty that looks running down the page. And then I'm just making sure that my paper towel here on this side catches any of the distress stain so it doesn't go over onto the other side. So I'm just gonna do that exact same thing now on the other side of my page. So there you can see what that looks like now that that's dried. And I want to do the exact same thing, this time using a slightly darker color of stain, my aged mahogany. So once again, I'm just gonna put my paper towel behind my page. This time though, I'm gonna spritz a little bit of water first. So I'm just gonna get my aged mahogany ready and I'm going to spritz my water and then I'm going to put a little bit of my aged mahogany along the top, not as much as I did in the last one, and then just spritz that a little bit just so that I get a deeper color. Every time, every color you add, every layer you add just adds a little bit of extra depth and dimension to your finished page. And by spritzing with water, what you're doing is you're helping the color move and you're helping the colors blend one with the other. So 
So I'm now just going to go ahead and let the water keep dripping to the bottom of the page and then dry that. So I've now finished drying my page. As you can see, with the addition of water, it actually lightens some of the original layer of wild honey stain that we placed, so it almost looks like I've dripped a little bit of white or some of the picket fence stain on this. So now the next thing I'm going to do is take some of my perfect pearls, and I'm going to use the Sunflower Sparkle and the Mandarin color to give this a little bit of blitz. So I'm just going to shake up my bottle really well. You can hear the mixing ball inside. And then I'm just going to give it a couple of squirts. And the, the effect is not one that gets picked up on camera, but when you look closely at it, you get to see that beautiful gold glimmer from the gold. And then this mandarin one has an orange color inside. So my next step is now to dry this again. So now that I have my background created, my next step is to stamp some images onto my journal page. For that, I'm going to be using this well-worn art stamp set from Wendy Vecchi, and I'm using this image right here. So I have it already mounted to an acrylic grid block. Now, the ink I'm going to be using is my Jet Black Ranger Archival. This is my number one go-to ink whenever I'm doing any kind of art journaling. So I'm just inking up my stamp and then stamping it directly onto my page. Now one thing to note, because the surface is not even, you could end up with only partially stamped images. That's normal and not to be worried about. It all adds to the finished effect of the journal page. One tip that I find often helps whenever I'm working on our journal pages is to take your stamps off the block. I find sometimes I get a better impression with that. So as I go ahead and stamp my image, what I'm going to be doing is stamping it at varying heights. And I'm just going to continue to do that all across until I reach the end of my spread. So in the next step of my art journaling process, I like to add texture, and that usually involves some type of background stamp. Here I'm going to be using this kind of ledger type image that comes from the Wendy Vecchi A Form of Art stamp set. And I've chosen an ink color, this Sienna, it's a Ranger Archival ink that's tone on tone with the colors in my background, because I don't want my um, the texture I'm adding to become too obvious or too overpowering for my page. So I've covered my stamp in the ink and I'm now going to take a paper towel and just dab that off a little bit and then just start randomly applying it in places. And if I find it doesn't show up, like I just noticed there, I'm not seeing that all that well, then you can apply it full strength. But I always like to try lighter and then go darker if I'm not getting the effect I'm looking for. And as you can see, I'm just working with my stamp, just the pure rubber. I didn't bother putting it on a block. There you can see how you just get this really faint background. Again, with art journaling, it's all about layers. There's no right way, there's no wrong way to art journal. It's all about personal preference and style, but one of the things that I have found in the time that I've been art journaling is that layers will add lots of depth and dimension and visual interest to your work. And as you can see, oftentimes I will take my stamp and I'll just keep stamping until every last remnant of ink is off my stamp. What that does is give me my ink in different shades and tones, because of course as you, every time you stamp it lightens what's left over, and so you get various colors. So I've pretty much covered my entire area and it's stamped kind of patchily. So in, I get these little peaks of script throughout the background of my page. So I'm now going to add a little bit more texture to my page using a Distressed Grid Background Stamp by Christy Tomlinson. I'm using my Ranger Jet Black Archival Ink and just patting it lightly on the surface of the stamp. And I'm patting it in a very patchy manner because I don't want it to be a perfect impression. I'm then taking my paper towel and just dabbing away some of that ink. And then taking my stamp and going in and pressing it against my page. And you can see here how you get this grid pattern. And then without re-inking, I'm just going to take it and press it in some other 
parts of my page. And when I notice the impression becomes too faint, I go back and follow the same process. So I don't know if you can see this, but I've added that grid pattern along the outer edge of my pages. So I'm now going to move on to adding another stamped image, and that includes a set of small butterflies. Some of my favorite imagery in my art journals are butterflies. So here I have a stamp from the shabby French Stampers Anonymous stamp. And oftentimes when I'm trying to decide where I want to place an image, I'll stamp it first on a piece of acetate or an imaging sheet from a stamp imaging, and then I lay it on my page to decide where I want it to appear. And then once I'm happy with the placement, or I've decided, I then go ahead and stamp my image. So I'm just going to add a couple more of these butterfly stamps. So as you can see here, I've stamped my butterflies several times, trying to get the impression of butterflies flitting throughout the flowers. Now, I'm almost ready to move on to my greeting, but before I do that, I want to take a little bit more of my aged mahogany stain, and I want to come in here and sort of blend out this edge. I find that it looks a little bit harsh, like there's a line there, so I just want to take some of my Distress Stain and kind of pull it downwards from the top, and then just use my finger to kind of blend it in. So at this point, I'm ready now to add my either my journaling or my quote for my page. And which one I choose to add really depends on my mood. Sometimes I like to journal and spill my thoughts onto the page. Other times a page serves as a visual reminder of something that I happen to be thinking about. This week I've been pondering a particular scripture that talks about trust in God, so I wanted this page to be a visual reminder to me about that. So I've chosen a passage of scripture that says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And that's going to be my main focal uh, verse or quote on my page. Now, usually for my quotes, I like to use a combination of letter stickers and a um, marker for hand journaling. So I like it to have a little bit of texture and interest to it. So I have found these stickers in my stash that I had. They are from a DCWV Die Cuts with a View. They're called the Mariposa stickers or an epoxy sticker with these little gold dots. And I thought the gold tied in nicely with the gold spritz I have on my page. I also have these mini little letter stickers. And then for my journaling, I'm going to be using my Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pen Black, the fine tip. So at this point, I simply start layering my letters. Now, in order to create continuity from one page to another, oftentimes I'll have a greeting spanning across two pages. So if I know that I want part of my greeting to end at the seam, I don't want it to be exactly on the seam or the page won't shut properly. So I'm going to start with my second letter, which actually is my R, and I'm going to apply that first to my page, making sure my page then closes and then go ahead and apply my remaining letters. So I've applied my word trust and I'm now going to use my journaling pen to add a couple more words. So trust in the and then I'm going to add my next set of stickers, this time these small letter stickers. And I'm just going to continue on alternating handwritten these big epoxy stickers along with these small mini stickers. So there you can see what my quote looks like with my combination of handwriting and the stickers. Now one of the things for me when I look at the stickers, I see that white on the small little letter stickers and that really stands out. So I want to try pull some of that white into the rest of the page without it becoming too obvious. So for that I'm going to use my Sharpie paint pen and this is my white extra fine point. So I'm just going to make sure I shake the pen really well and then I'm just going to take my pen and I'm just going to put tiny little points of white amongst the flowers. And I'm just pressing down the tip and I'm just putting tiny little clusters of points. You can see that. You can see that there. And if as it dries it's not white enough, I'm just going to go over it with the tip again. 
So there you can see what that looks like. So I'm going to interdisperse those across my flowers, just as I mentioned again, to pull in some of that white. So there you can see the beautiful little pop that just adding that little bit of white adds to my flowers and it really ties in with the white in my letters. Now at this point I'm really happy with my page. I absolutely love the way the Distress Stains and the Perfect Pearls Mists blended to create this gorgeous background. And the color as well, when I look at these colors they just make me happy. So I'm going to leave it as is and the only thing that I'm going to do is seal it. Now generally when I'm sealing my art journal pages I usually turn to my Claudine Helmuth Multimedia Matte. Now in this case though I can't use this medium. The Multimedia Matte is a water soluble medium and I used water soluble uh, products on my page. So if I apply my matte medium onto this page it'll react with my water soluble mediums and they'll start to bleed beyond what I have here and I really like the way this is so I don't want it to blend or bleed anymore. So in this case, I would seal my art journal page using a spray fixative, something like a Krylon matte spray fixative, and give it a good two or three coats, letting it dry a little bit in between, and then you're good to go. Then your pages are safe from handling. And I'm a very visual and tactile person. I like to go back over my art journals. I like to run my hands over them. My kids love thumbing through my journals and doing the same. So that just gives it an extra bit of protection. So there you've seen a bit of my art journaling process and how I incorporate different mediums into my art journal. I hope that this has encouraged you to give it a try in your art journaling.